Racism. That thing that we all know and love, with some of the best participants being... Barbecue Becky. I hear you have a problem with these gentlemen having a barbecue oh, here at the lake. So What's going on? Oh, now she don't want to talk. <laughs> she doesn't want to talk now. <laughs> uh, it's illegal to have a charcoal grill in the park here. No, it's not actually. I just yeah, looked at the it map. Is. It says this is a designated barbecue area. No, it, if you, it, not for a charcoal grill. No charcoal grills are allowed. Do you want to see it? Yeah, I gotta try to it, you must not have looked up. What kind of thing. grill are you not allowed, and why are you so bent out of shape over them being Because here? It, it causes extra money from our city. Permit Patty. This woman don't want to let a little girl sell some water. She calling the police on an eight-year-old little girl. You can hide all you want. The whole world going to see you, boo. Yeah, and um, illegally selling water without a permit? Yeah. On my property. It's not your property, right? And whoever the hell decided to call the cops on two black men sitting at Starbucks. But in all seriousness, the majority of people do understand that racism can exist on an individual level. In fact, I could fill up this whole PSA with clips of people of color having the cops called on them for silly reasons that white people would never get the cops called on them for. But I'm not going to do that because I think you get the idea. I think that it's harder for some people to accept that racism exists on a larger scale than just an individual level. In fact, racism is present in many systems and one of those systems is the prism system. In the United States, the prism system, in my opinion, is one of the most obvious, obvious systems that is racially discriminant. People of color are arrested and incarcerated at a disproportional rate to white people. According to the Sentencing Project, African American adults are 5.9 times as likely to be incarcerated than whites, and Hispanics are 3.1 times as likely. As of 2001, one of every three black boys born in that year could expect to go to prison in his lifetime, as could one of every six Latinos compared to one of every 17 white boys. At first glance, those numbers seem to be ridiculous, but those numbers clearly show how the current prison system is racially biased. These numbers aren't simply because black people commit more crimes, but exist because of racial bias in our system. For example, black and white people equally commit drug crimes like weed. Despite this, black people are more likely to be charged for a drug crime than white people. It is often assumed that a black person would be more likely to have drugs than a white person, so black people will get searched for drugs more than white people. People of color are targeted for searches. While driving, black people are more likely to be stopped, searched, and arrested than white people. According to the Sentencing Project, Police are more likely to stop black and Hispanic drivers for invest investigatory stops, which are stops that are proact which are <laughs> proactive stops used to investigate drivers deemed suspicious rather than stopping blacks and Hispanics for traffic safety stops, which are stops that are um Reactive stops used to enforce traffic laws or vehicle codes. 
So they're basically, you know, just pulling them over because they look suspicious, not because they've done anything wrong or are violating some code. Hispanic and black drivers are three times more likely to be searched than white drivers, despite police having a lower contraband hit rate among blacks and Hispanics than white people. Being targeted for committing possible crimes is not the only problem that the prison system causes for people of color. People of color can't always afford bail. 70% of the time, a person will need bail to get out of pretrial detention. Blacks and Latinos have a higher possibility of being denied bail than a white person. Black and Latinos disproportionately have higher money bonds that cause them to stay in pre-trial detention than white people. It has been proven that people who are in pre-trial detention are more likely to be convicted, accept bad plea, plea deals, and obtain longer sentences. Because of the majority of people who go into prisons are poor, they receive overworked public defenders with a high caseload who cannot give their best to the people they're defending. People of color are more likely to be in poverty than white people. It has been shown that, pro pro that probation in the prison system also has worse long-term effects on people of color. One of these long-term effects is employment. A white person with a criminal record is 50% more likely to get hired than a black person with a, with a criminal record. Disenfranchisement is also a huge problem that our justice system creates. Some people with a criminal record are denied the right to vote. Personally, I think that this is outrageous. It can stop certain groups of people from having a say in a country that is supposed to be a type of democracy that prides itself on being for the people. Since people of color are more likely to go to prison, they are more likely to be disenfranchised. On top of being more likely to be disenfranchised, voter identification has also been found to discriminate against people of color. The prison system is contributing to the voices of people of color being squashed. There is also discriminatory behavior in among law, among law enforcers, which helps contribute to discrimination in the prison system. Police brutality is real and tragic. Even though some people would like to deny it, people of color are treated more harshly by the police than white people on average. Currently, we are in the middle of the Black Lives Matter movement, which is attempting to fix police brutality. There have been many names going around of victims of police brutality, and I think you've like heard some of them. George Floyd, he repeatedly said that he couldn't breathe and was suffocated by a police officer. Breonna Taylor, who was shot eight times by a police officer, by police officers who broke into her house. They broke into her house attempting a drug bust, and she was not even the person they were looking for. And then there was also Tamir Rice. Tamir is not a name that is said a lot in the current Black Lives Matter movement. It happened a long time before George and Brianna. I remember hearing and watching what happened to Tamir, and it stuck with me. When Tamir was 12, he was in a park with a toy gun. The police came and in two seconds shot and killed him. They immediately shot him when they got out of the car. They didn't talk to him. Beyond that, the Black Lives Matter protests have been getting a lot of heat and violence. A lot of that violence has come from police attacking people who have been peacefully protesting. We've just had to run about a block as police moved in. We've been uh, fired at with rubber bullets. My cameraman has been hit. Uh, we've also seen tear gas being used. Here we go, they're moving through again. This is exactly what it looks like. Exactly what it looks like. We're just staying safely. Oh. Whoa. Um, oh. Amelia, can you hear us? Amelia, are you okay? Or your cameraman? 
there are not discriminating between protesters and the media here. Amelia, yeah. can you hear us yet? Amelia, are you there? Are you OK? Yes, I am. I am. You heard us yelling there that, that we were media, but they they don't care. They are being indiscriminate at the moment. They chased us down that street, and as you see. Uh, they were firing uh, these rubber bullets at everyone. There is tear gas, and now we are really surrounded by the police, and you really saw the way that they dealt with my cameraman, Tim. They're quite violent. As protests continue across America, this terrifying scene took place in Charlotte. Hundreds of protesters found themselves trapped by police after they fired tear gas from both ends of the street, blocking their escape. They're trapped, there's tear gas. They're shooting pepper balls at us. They've thrown out tear gas, flashbangs, smoke. Some managed to flee under the parking garage gate. Oh my God, my face is on fire, my eyes are on fire. First and last clip were in England and not America. I added the clips to show how the Black Lives Matter movement is not only happening in America, but is happening in other places in the world. And how like there's also like issues with police brutality and like racism in other places. Peaceful protests have been attacked unnecessarily. The police brutality that is shown in these clips does not necessarily target one race, but it does target people who are a part of a movement asking for racial equality. As shown in some of the videos, police are using tear gas on some of the peaceful protesters. We do not even use tear gas in our own wars, but we use it on our own citizens who are just asking for equality. There should not be backlash against the Black Lives Matter movement which fights for people's rights, yet there is. Beyond the protests being attacked, there are many articles vilifying the Black Lives Matter movement and articles about how people are attacking the movement.
So the Black Lives Matter movement is simply attempting to get rid of racial discrimination, especially like in the police force. We need the Black Lives Matter movement. Sometimes I'll hear people say that like racism doesn't exist in institutions because there's people like Oprah, but this logic is flawed and simply not true. When it comes to racism, we as a society need to stop picking out a few examples that satisfy what we want to hear and go into like our own agenda. We need to stop making excuses for the brutality that cops show and we need to stop making racism and us versus them battle in America. The Black Lives Matter movement should be about all of us. In America, we shouldn't look as we shouldn't look at different races as like people that are other than us. We are all cons we are all American citizens, no matter what color your skin is. To me, the Black Lives Matter movement is a movement that demands justice and reform for reform for our American citizens. So there are ways to solve the issues that we're currently going through. There are big things that we can change in America to help stop racism in our institutions, but there's also small things that we can do on an individual level to stop racism. We can listen to people when they tell their stories of when they are being discriminated against and not dismiss them. We can educate ourselves on the problems that groups of people face that we are not a part of. Understanding and knowing other people's struggles that we don't experience can do wonders. When we hear someone saying or doing something prejudiced, we can call them out and educate them. We can connect and become friends from pe with people from all different kind of races and backgrounds. I know this is a pretty obvious one, but we can do our best to try to treat everyone the same. And sometimes this is easier said than done because we often assume things about people based on their looks. I know it's like hard like not to assume things based on people's looks because that's a bit of like almost a survival skill in a way, but I guess what I'm trying to say is that we shouldn't let those assumptions become facts in our head. And we should allow people to have a chance. We should give people a chance, basically. One of the most important things we can do is vote. We can educate ourselves and vote on the type of legislation that will help reduce discrimination. According to the Sentencing Project, there are there are many things in the there are many things the United States can do to reduce discrimination in the legal system. One thing we can do is reduce the war on drugs. Drug arrests should be significantly scaled back. The amount of low-level drug offenders prosecuted should be lower. People should not be detained pre-trial unless they pose a safety or flight risk and not because they can't afford bail. We should develop and put in place programs that train, oh wait, I'm sorry. We should, put, we should put in place programs and training that aim to end racial biases in police officers, public defenders, prosecutors, judge, jury members, and parole boards. We should allow every American citizen the right to vote even if they have a criminal record. No matter what our race is, we are all human beings. 
and we should all be treated equally. Thank you so much for watching my video. The, um, the links to uh, everything and my citations to where I got this information will be in the description. Thank you.